July 15th Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible 2 Chronicles chapters 35 and 36 of the Old Testament Josiah observed a Passover festival for the Lord in Jerusalem. They slaughtered the Passover lambs on the 14th day of the first month. He appointed the priests to fulfill their duties and encouraged them to carry out their service in the Lord's temple. He told the Levites, who instructed all Israel about things consecrated to the Lord, Place the holy ark in the temple which King Solomon, son of David of Israel, built. Don't carry it on your shoulders. Now serve the Lord your God and his people Israel. Prepare yourselves by your families according to your divisions, as instructed by King David of Israel and his son Solomon. Stand in the sanctuary and, together with the Levites, represent the family divisions of your countrymen. Slaughter the Passover lambs, consecrate yourselves, and make preparations for your countrymen to do what the Lord commanded through Moses. From his own royal flocks and herds, Josiah supplied the people with 30,000 lambs and goats for the Passover sacrifice, as well as 3,000 cattle. His officials also willingly contributed to the people, priests, and Levites. Hilkiah, Zechariah, and Jehiel, the leaders of God's temple, supplied 2,600 Passover sacrifices and 300 cattle. Conaniah and his brothers Shemaiah and Nathanael, along with Hashabiah, Jehiel, and Josabad, the officials of the Levites, supplied the Levites with 5,000 Passover sacrifices and 500 cattle. Preparations were made and the priests stood at their posts and the Levites in their divisions as prescribed by the king. They slaughtered the Passover lambs and the priests splashed the blood while the Levites skinned the animals. They reserved the burnt offerings and the cattle for the family divisions of the people to present to the Lord, as prescribed in the scroll of Moses. They cooked the Passover sacrifices over the open fire as prescribed and cooked the consecrated offerings in pots, kettles, and pans. They quickly served them all to the people. Afterward, they made preparations for themselves and for the priest, because the priests, the descendants of Aaron, were offering burnt sacrifices and fat portions until evening. The Levites made preparations for themselves and for the priest, the descendants of Aaron. The musicians, the descendants of Asaph, manned their post as prescribed by David, Asaph, Heman, and Jeduthun, the king's prophet. The guards at the various gates did not leave their posts, for their fellow Levites made preparations for them. So all the preparations for the Lord's service were made that day, as the Passover was observed and the burnt sacrifices were offered on the altar of the Lord, as prescribed by King Josiah. So the Israelites who were present observed the Passover at that time, as well as the Feast of Unleavened Bread for seven days. A Passover like this had not been observed in Israel since the days of Samuel the prophet. None of the kings of Israel had observed a Passover like the one celebrated by Josiah, the priest, the Levites, all the people of Judah and Israel who were there, and the residents of Jerusalem. This Passover was observed in the eighteenth year of Josiah's reign. After Josiah had done all this for the temple, King Necho of Egypt marched up to do battle at Carchemish on the Euphrates River. Josiah marched out to oppose him. Necho sent messengers to him, saying, Why are you opposing me, O king of Judah? I am not attacking you today, but the kingdom with which I am at war. God told me to hurry. Stop opposing God, who is with me, or else he will destroy you. But Josiah did not turn back from him. He disguised himself for battle. He did not take seriously the words of Necho which he had received from God. He went to fight him in the plain of Megiddo. Archer shot King Josiah. The king ordered his servants, Take me out of this chariot, for I am seriously wounded. So his servants took him out of the chariot, put him in another chariot that he owned, and brought him to Jerusalem, where he died. He was buried in the tombs of his ancestors. All the people of Judah and Jerusalem mourned Josiah. Jeremiah composed laments for Josiah, which all the male and female singers used to mourn Josiah to this very day. It has become customary in Israel to sing these. 
They are recorded in the Book of Laments. The rest of the events of Josiah's reign, including the faithful acts he did in obedience to what is written in the Law of the Lord and his accomplishments from start to finish, are recorded in the scroll of the kings of Israel and Judah. The people of the land took Jehoaz, son of Josiah, and made him king in his father's place in Jerusalem. Jehoaz was 23 years old when he became king and he reigned three months in Jerusalem. The king of Egypt prevented him from ruling in Jerusalem and imposed on the land a special tax of 100 talents of silver and a talent of gold. The king of Egypt made Jehoaz's brother Eliakim king over Judah and Jerusalem and changed his name to Jehoiakim. Necho seized his brother Jehoahaz and took him to Egypt. Jehoiakim was 25 years old when he became king and he reigned for 11 years in Jerusalem. He did evil in the sight of the Lord his God. King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon attacked him, bound him with bronze chains, and carried him away to Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar took some of the items in the Lord's temple to Babylon and put them in his palace there. The rest of the events of Jehoiakim's reign, including the horrible sins he committed and his shortcomings, are recorded in the scroll of the kings of Israel and Judah. His son Jehoiakim replaced him as king. Jehoiakim was 18 years old when he became king, and he reigned three months and ten days in Jerusalem. He did evil in the sight of the Lord. At the beginning of the year, King Nebuchadnezzar ordered him to be brought to Babylon, along with the valuable items in the Lord's temple. In his place he made his relative Zedekiah king over Judah and Jerusalem. Zedekiah was 21 years old when he became king, and he ruled for 11 years in Jerusalem. He did evil in the sight of the Lord his God. He did not humble himself before Jeremiah the prophet, the Lord's spokesman. He also rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar, who had made him vow allegiance in the name of God. He was stubborn and obstinate and refused to return to the Lord God of Israel. All the leaders of the priest and people became more unfaithful and committed the same horrible sins practiced by the nations. They defiled the Lord's temple, which he had consecrated. In Jerusalem. The Lord God of their ancestors continually warned them through his messengers, for he felt compassion for his people and his dwelling place. But they mocked God's messengers, despised his warnings, and ridiculed his prophets. Finally, the Lord got very angry at his people, and there was no one who could prevent his judgment. He brought against them the king of the Babylonians, who slaughtered their young men in their temple. He did not spare young men or women or even the old and aging. God handed everyone over to him. He carried away to Babylon all the items in God's temple, whether large or small, as well as what was in the treasuries of the Lord's temple and in the treasuries of the king and his officials. They burned down the Lord's temple and tore down the wall of Jerusalem. They burned all its fortified buildings and destroyed all its valuable items. He deported to Babylon all who escaped the sword. They served him and his sons until the Persian kingdom rose to power. This took place to fulfill the Lord's message delivered through Jeremiah. The land experienced its sabbatical years. It remained desolate for 70 years as prophesied. In the first year of the reign of King Cyrus of Persia, in fulfillment of the promise he delivered through Jeremiah, the Lord moved King Cyrus of Persia to issue a written decree throughout his kingdom. It read, This is what King Cyrus of Persia says, The Lord God of the heavens has given to me all the kingdoms of the earth. He has appointed me to build for him a temple in Jerusalem in Judah. May the Lord your God energize you who belong to his people, so you may be able to go back there. God, I know that you have been warning us for many years. You know, when it talks about in here that you had continually warned them through his messengers for he felt compassion for his people in his dwelling place, but they mocked God's messengers, despised his warnings and ridiculed his prophets. And finally, the Lord got very angry at his people and there's no one who could prevent his judgment. And God, as much as I continue to pray for where I live here in Seattle and in the country I live in the United States and the rest of the world 
sometimes it feels like it's not enough that there's just not enough of a remnant praying to you to show your grace and mercy to the rest of the world who not only has turned their backs on you but but does make fun of the people who share your word um, who bring through your messengers information about what you want the world to know about you I am of course incredibly thankful for your grace and mercy at allowing us to continue to live here and and try try with your strength and in your determination to tell the whole world about you but God in all honesty some days it's so incredibly difficult uh, we're not even persecuted anywhere close to the rest of the world as Christians but some days it just feels like nobody's listening and I know in my heart that that's not true. I, I know from the Bible that's not true. I, I know when your word goes out, it won't return void. And, and you'll you'll not only do what you need to do when we talk to people, but more importantly, we have to realize that you are in charge, clearly in charge. This is your world and you can do anything and everything you want in and of this world. God, I just pray for that those times when we as people of ministries and missions get exhausted you have promised us your strength at those times and God I just pray that you will see that we get past those those low points where it feels like we have not another ounce of strength to go on another ounce of strength to talk to, to one more person who's going to reject us that we're taking all of this personally and upon ourselves that instead we should simply lay it at your feet and allow you and your strength and your grace and your mercy to take over at that time and carry our ministry and our mission work on to that next level god we have no idea all the plans that you have for us and we never will you've simply asked us to be obedient and that may be to information we know right now. That may be to have faith about something that is coming. But you simply ask us to be obedient to you. And God, I'm just, I am just praying for obedience in your leaders and your people who are out there talking to others. That they won't falter as the world has faltered and as the world has turned its back on you. And as the world makes fun of those of, those of us who are trying to tell others about you, about your forgiveness, about your son. God, I pray for strength. I pray for endurance. And I pray that they remain faithful and true to you. It is only through you that we can do all things. Without you, I doubt we can do anything. In your son's name I pray. Amen. <laughs>